telling a woman she's a bad mom is like the most offensive thing you can say to her. The bad mom is having a moment in pop culture. To bad mom. To bad mom. This once taboo and frightening creature has become so popular, she's even got her own movie franchise. Whatever her reasons, this woman is unable or unwilling to conform to our society's expectations for mothers to be nurturing, dependable, and unconditionally loving. Across her various forms, the bad mom is defined by a few common traits. She's self-centered. Her desires tend to take precedence over her family's needs. I just haven't met anybody who's not completely self-absorbed and impossible to have a conversation with. If that's a veiled criticism about me, I won't hear it and I won't respond to it. This selfishness makes her irresponsible. Mother, I haven't seen you all week. You're neglecting me. I know, honey, but it's nothing personal. I'm neglecting your brother and sister, too. <laughs> She doesn't mince words. The bad mom can be scathing, even or especially toward her own children. Oh, poor you! She's emotionally unstable, given to bouts of anger, depression, or mania. Oh, you make me so mad, sometimes I just want to break your neck. <sighs> Did you get the cookies I sent you? And these episodes might speak to deeper discontent or psychological issues plaguing this woman who's ill-equipped for or unfulfilled by traditional motherhood. Don't! throw away your dreams for this child. Don't let that man poison your life the way he did mine. Fundamentally, this woman is a rejection of all that the perfect mom is supposed to be. But while the ideal mom is largely a Hollywood fantasy that doesn't exist in real life, the bad mom is human and real, and that's what makes her so compelling to watch. However, it would help if you all showed up, looking like a loving, supportive family. For how long? Ten minutes tops. See if you can get it down to five. Here's our take on the bad mom, the form she takes, and the society that gave birth to her. I mean, I'm doing the best that I can. Yeah, that's what makes it even sadder. You're watching The Take. Thanks for watching, and be sure to share and subscribe. This video is brought to you by Sundance Now, the streaming service we watch for the very best films and original TV dramas. Get 30 days completely free with our link and the promo code The Take. Generally speaking, we can break the bad mom trope down into three types. The outrageous mom, a comedic take on the awful mother, whose cutting cruelty and over-the-top unfiltered behavior is deliciously enjoyable to watch. Catherine's on bed rest. She's been diagnosed with an incompetent cervix. Well, why should her cervix be any different than the rest of her? The dark side of the mom, a more serious take on the trope, showing us the insecure, emotionally draining, sometimes terrifying side of motherhood. I'm going to break your arm next. And the moms are people too, mom, a relatable version of the trope, which ultimately reminds us that our moms are human beings too. And like the rest of us, they shouldn't be expected to be perfect. Yesterday I gave Bernard the wrong juice box and he called me a dumb bitch. Let's begin with our first type, the outrageous mom. This first version of the bad mom is first and foremost funny. Jesus, whose kid died? Oh, who remembers? Check Pam's blog. But her humor is vicious, as devastating for her children as it is entertaining to us. Come on, I've suddenly lost my appetite. Oh, who's gonna believe that? Still, the outrageous mom isn't generally evil. She's just a bit of a jerk. And most of the time, that behavior is reciprocated by her kids. Surprise! We want you to leave! <laughs> yes, that's just what I always wanted! <laughs> Their mutual sniping becomes its own sort of love language. I suppose you think that they're more nurturing than I am. Mother, there are terrorist cells that are more nurturing than you are. There may be cruelty, but most of the time it's softened by genuine love. I'm done disapproving, Jackie. I'm just trying to help. I need to know that someone is looking out for my little boy. The outrageous mom is a caricature. I mean, it's one banana, Michael. What could it cost? Ten dollars? You've never actually set foot in a supermarket, have you? She's the extreme opposite of what we expect a caring, nurturing mother to be. A woman's friend. No one doesn't have a friend. That's because he's shy. No, he's not. He's fat and he's stupid. But the truth is, there's probably something of her in all mothers. 
Maybe they're not as mean as Lucille Bluth, who adopted a son just to punish one of her other sons, only to use the new one as a handbag. There's just absolutely no purse that will go with this outfit. Got a little pocket there, Anya. Oh no. Emery board. But very few are as pure as Carol Brady either. Oh, Jan, we're so proud of you. In reality, most moms are somewhere in between, a little bit of both. What parent has never made a snide remark at her kid's expense? Oh, bravo. You're in a crap harvesting factory, genius. Put a personal goal before her child's feelings. Tell her that I'm canceling the lunch that was supposed to prove there's nothing more important than Catherine because something more important than Catherine has come up. Played favorites. I love all my children equally. I don't care for Joe indulged her jealous, manipulative side, or schemed to get her way. What's the matter with you? Your mother's not well. Can't you see that she's faking, Milton? In this respect, The Bad Mom is perhaps best understood as a liberating response to all of TV's perfect and proper Carol Brady's, who took care of the cleaning and child rearing while wearing high heels and pearls. I don't like you using words like flip an ape. Or in later years, the Claire Huxtables, who worked demanding jobs outside the home, yet still found time to be aspirational parents. I'm telling you right now, if anybody, anybody at all tries to hurt my baby, I'm gonna go out there and stop them. The debuts of unapologetic bad mom Peggy Bundy in Married with Children in 1987 and Roseanne in 1988 forever challenged this fantasy of the perfect TV mom. Roseanne Connor was raising three children, working her blue-collar job, and handling the bulk of the chores. But unlike her predecessors, she made no secret about resenting it. And you think everything gets done by some wonderful wizard? Oh, poof, the laundry's folded. Poof, dinner's on the table. She could be extremely caustic, even hostile toward her kids. Mom, DJ and Darlene are killing each other. What's the bad news? Yet Roseanne was compelling to viewers because, underneath the sarcasm, she was loving and fiercely protective, and owned the fact that she was doing this her own way. You think I've made your life difficult so far? Well, now I'm family, and you've seen the way I treat my family. In addition to being funny, the outrageous mom is strong. She refuses to let her personality be consumed by motherhood. And in this way, she can be empowering. <laughs> oh, you know nothing of my powers, do you? The outrageous mom's inappropriate and raw comic relief implicitly mocks all those old-school goody-two-shoes moms for being too uptight, reactionary, or inauthentic. No. There's not going to be a film. The only thing Catherine ever finished was an entire ice cream cake. By making light of the darker tendencies that exist, to some extent in all of our mothers, and all of us, she's cathartic. It's an idiot on a scooter at night? It's gotta be Job. Let's give him a scare. The outrageous mom story normalizes and makes us feel okay about the pettiness and imperfections in our own family relationships. What's this? What's happening? It's going to be all right. Why are you squeezing me with your body? It's a hug, Michael. I'm hugging you. Sometimes mothers didn't want to be mothers. Did I tell you any of the age you bought it? Thanks for making an appointment. Some definitely shouldn't have. And this brings us to our second type of the bad mom trope, the dark side of the mom, inhabited by mothers who show a complete lack of maternal instinct. You're me! You betcha. Unlike the more playful, loving spitefulness displayed by the outrageous mom, this type of bad mom hurts her children intentionally and irrevocably. I could stick this fork in your eye! And it's rarely fun to watch. This hurt can take the form of neglect. Listen, we're only going for a drive. You wanna come? No, she won't wanna come. You got better things to do, right? It can be emotional abuse. He's gonna laugh at you. No, They're all gonna no, laugh at you. No. Or the abuse can be physical. In the very worst cases, it can be all of them. You ruined my life! You done took my man, you had those babies, and you got me put off the welfare from running your goddamn stupid ass mouth! The anger and suffering of the dark side of the mom character can also express itself in more subtly insidious ways. If the clothes from that dry cleaning bag are on the floor of my closet, you're going to be a very sorry young lady. Mad Men's Betty Draper strains to live up to an idealized image of motherhood. Because she enjoys the status and idea of being a housewife, she's in denial of the fact that she hates the reality of being a stay-at-home wife and mom. I'm here all day, alone with them, outnumbered. 
Betty resents her messy, imperfect kids. Don't you hate getting manure in there? Little children, what's the difference? Taking her frustrations out on them. Don't you dare lie to me, I'll cut your fingers off. And her behavior demonstrates that emotionally, she's still a child herself. Basically, we're dealing with the emotions of a child here. Betty also attempts to pass down the warped, old-fashioned values that make her so miserable. Sally looks fat. Teaching her daughter to prioritize appearance over everything else. Not that I could have killed the kids, but we're such... This Sally could have survived and gone on living with this horrible scar on her face. The Sopranos matriarch, Livia Soprano, likewise has damaged her children with her toxic world outlook, which prizes the Mafia family's success over her actual family's well-being. She inflicts emotional damage on her offspring largely through guilt. And take the carving knife and stab me here. As with most of the mothers on the dark side of the mom, Livia takes no pleasure in motherhood. Babies are like animals. They're no different than dogs. And because she herself is deeply unhappy, she spreads this misery around. It's all a big nothing. What makes you think you're so special? Livia plays the martyr. I gave my life to my children on a silver platter. But she always puts herself first, even if that means putting a hit out on her own son. I try to do the right thing by you. You try to be whack? She Sir. doesn't understand you. She's smiling. Look at the look on her face. She's smiling. Come on. While these characters diverge in the methods and extent of their abuse, they all represent some ugly truths. Motherhood can exact a strong psychological toll on a woman, exposing insecurities, stirring up primal fears, even in some cases creating extreme mental disturbance. Livia Soprano, even as she pushes her children away, fears being abandoned. What do you care? Out of sight, out of mind. Carrie entering puberty triggers Margaret White's fear that her daughter will grow up and enter a world she regards as wicked and sinful. First sin was intercourse. I didn't sin, Mom. And whether they would admit it or not, the mothers of Fish Tank and Precious are in constant fear because of their precarious lives, and their hardship is only exacerbated by the additional burden of children. Real mother woman sacrifice! As these traumatized mothers, in turn, traumatize their children, they bequeath their pain to future generations. You had to see a shrink because of the mother you had. Upsetting as these stories can be, especially compared to the comic relief of the outrageous mom, they are genuine experiences of suffering that deserve to be addressed and can be illuminating to share. Mommy Dearest, whose title remains a shorthand for bad moms, is based on Christina Crawford's real-life account of alleged abuse by her mother, star actress Joan Crawford. According to the story, Joan clung to a narcissistic Hollywood ideal of motherhood that left her unable to cope with reality. Beautiful. But bringing her difficult reality to audiences has had a powerful cultural impact counteracting that fantasy. Nothing is good! All flesh is a mess! Finally, we have our third version of this trope. The moms are people too, mom. You canceled Christmas? I'm not canceling Christmas, I'm holding it hostage. Unlike the cartoonishly selfish or abusive cautionary tales of Types 1 and 2, the Type 3 example is a complex, realistic depiction of a mom that reminds us she's a human being. At least once a day, I feel like the worst mom in the world. And I cry in my car. <laughs> this sympathetic portrayal makes the character's frustration and exhaustion understandable. And it illustrates that, on a bad day, anyone can be a quote-unquote bad mom. Do you want to buy her the earrings? Because that's why she's crying, because of $6 earrings that she has them at home already. This version of the trope is often the protagonist of her story, or else her perspective is heavily featured. We see, from the mom's point of view, everything she's forced to deal with, day in and day out. I've had a really long day. I screwed up my daughter's first day at soccer, and I hand-searched my son's poo for a pen cap. Often, the moms are people too mom begins trying hard to be a really good mother. I love you. I love you. Oh my god, mom. Not so loud. I love my baby so much! God, they hate me. But like other human beings, she reacts to being mistreated by the people in her life. So sometimes this Type 3 narrative is a bad mom origin story, as when Mila Kunis's Amy in Bad Moms decides to break bad. Let's be bad moms. 
Lois Wilkerson from Malcolm in the Middle may be overbearing, controlling, even downright bullying. Boys, go to your room! What? What do you mean we're on your side? I said go! But she was once a caring mother to her eldest son, who spurned her love and left her embittered. You two have been at each other's throats since the day he was born. He started it. In Bad Moms, once Amy relaxes, stops holding herself to an impossible standard, and ultimately learns to forgive herself for not being a perfect mom, only then is she finally able to be happy. I think that we as moms do way too much stuff. So Amy discovers that letting herself be a worse mom helps her become a more fulfilled person, which ironically makes her a better mom in important ways, like being able to connect and have spontaneous fun with her kids. Free soap. No, honey, don't take that. Oh no, that's some good soap. Yeah. Take it. Other versions of this type likewise might seem like bad moms by certain rigid standards, but they have unorthodox strengths. Lorelai Gilmore may be irresponsible and immature, behaving more like her daughter's friend than her mother. There's plenty to do tonight that we can be mortified about tomorrow. Yet her spontaneity and honest refusal to sugarcoat reality create an unusually strong bond with Rory. Oh my god, I hate her. Oh, me too. You have no idea who I'm talking about. Solidarity, sister. And while Ladybird mom Marion McPherson may come across as harsh on her daughter Ladybird, You should just go to City College. You know, with your work ethic, just go to City College and then to jail, and then back to City College, and then maybe you'd learn to pull yourself up and not expect everybody to do everything. This directness is part of a fiercely close and loving mother daughter bond. Oh, honey. Oh, oh, it's okay. <laughs> In Sean Baker's The Florida Project and the Oscar-winning Andrea Arnold short Wasp, low-income mothers feel they have no choice but to do things that appear like grossly negligent parenting to the outside world. I just want to talk to him for a little bit longer, all right? If she sees you, she'll f***ing turn us in and you'll get taken away from me. Do you understand? Come on. But these film's sympathetic portrayals make us understand that these young, struggling women who love their kids deeply are faced with an impossible situation. You know I like pepperoni. Pepperoni costs money. All of these examples are showcasing well-intentioned but overwhelmed moms who are dealing with major life stresses the best they can. You're a big f***ing Your sister's an asshole, and your other sister's great! God. Still, like the other two types we've seen, the Moms Are People 2 mom decides not to let motherhood totally define her. She's a multifaceted person with opinions and interests and frustrations and ideas, not just a slave to her children. You're my mom! I want you to know if I have sex or if I want to get high. Ah! No! Hide things from me! Please! She defends her right to be a human being. And what's so bad about that? As much as these three types of so-called bad moms differ from each other, they can frequently overlap, even in the same character. On Little Fires Everywhere, Elena veers from being the terrifying dark side of the mom what does it matter with you? to the relatable Moms Are People 2 mom in the same episode. Oh no, are you okay? What's the matter? The outrageous mom is capable of disarming sincerity. I mean, was I there for every single recital and lacrosse game? No. But I, I just can't even imagine life without my precious Sterling. The dark side of the mom characters are often victims to be pitied, and they can move us through moments of humor. Your warm embrace, and I what the hell are you doing? Him. Or compassion. Sally, I always worried about you because you marched to the beat of your own drum. But now I know that's good. All these people have also been damaged by their own flawed parents, just as we all have. In the end, every mom has all three of these people in her. She can be hilariously petty, her personality foibles the butt of our jokes. She can be disturbed, trapped by her circumstances, and unable to shield her children from her own psychological pain. And she can be playfully reckless and irresponsible, feeling like she just needs to ditch the PTA meetings and have another drink. Mom, are you driving me to... Mm. Yeah, yeah, yes. What time? Oh my god, are you drunk? Oh, what are you, my wife, coach? You're what? Every time we meet a bad mom, we're invited to reflect on the presumptions we have about parenthood whether as parents ourselves or as the children of them. 
The bad mom trope reminds us that humans aren't defined by these roles, or by how they measure up according to fixed ideas of what family should look like. Ideas that, with every passing year, seem increasingly old-fashioned. We laugh at, fear, and feel for the bad mom because each one of us is a part of her. And she, a part of us. I think we're all bad moms, and you know why? Because being a mom today is impossible. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. This video is brought to you by Sundance Now, a streaming service with the best selection out there. Whether you're looking for award-winning documentaries, electrifying dramas, or acclaimed period pieces, Sundance Now has it all. One TV show you can check out on Sundance Now is the Australian drama Bad Mothers. In the show's action-packed first season, Sarah learns that her husband is having an affair with her best friend and finds a new group of friends hell-bent on vengeance. Right now, Sundance Now is offering a free 30-day trial of premium membership. Just click the link in our description below, sundancenow.com, and use the promo code THETAKE at checkout.